In this two-part series, professional photographer Sean will be judging photographs from one of the four following categories, action, landscape, portrait and still life. This week we will be looking at action and landscape. I asked Sean to look at these action photographs and compare the two photographs. I asked Sean to look at the two landscape photographs and judge the two photographs. Let's have a look at a famous action photograph. The Terror of War 1972. This famous action photograph is by Nick Utt. This was such a powerful image that it helped to bring an end to the Vietnam War. The photographer also helped the screaming girl who had been hit by a Nepal. She was rushed to hospital with third degree burns. Here is Sean judging action photographs. I asked Sean what elements do you consider when judging an action photograph? Well, uh, um, and in this, in this uh, particular photograph, uh, this, is, this is quite interesting because there's, there's a few elements to it and, it, and, it's, and, it, and it, it's the, techni the technical aspects to it. I, I'm talking about this particular image of, of, of the plane and it's obviously a wing walker. Um, the positioning of, of the plane and the photographer is obviously important and we can't tell in this image whether, whether he was actually in a plane in front of the plane, which is good because <coughs> there's no uh, landscape within the image, there's only sky. So we, we, we could assume that either the plane's really low in this instance or he's in the lead plane in front of it. Um, but from a, a technical aspect, it's quite a difficult shot, uh, whichever way you look at it, because I don't if you notice on, on this, the actual propeller, you can't see it's actually spinning. If the photographer wasn't, a, wasn't used to uh, capturing um, such images with, with um, the, obviously the speed of planes or it, it could be a Formula One cars, um, that propeller would be still and it would look like the plane was actually um, not moving as such. But because the, the propeller's spinning, that's quite a diff difficult thing to do and one of the reasons why it's difficult to do is because um, when photographers take a shot, when, especially when they're doing action shots, that they want to um, make the, the, the subject still but yet make sure that it's still obviously it's moving. Um, it's obvious in this case because we've got a trail of smoke behind and we've got the spinning rotor, okay? Now, um, I'm saying it's difficult because generally in daytime when you want to catch something you have to use a fast shutter speed, yeah? To catch any action and to make something sharp you have to have a fast shutter speed. In this case, he's used a relatively slow shutter speed but what he's probably done is kept his camera really still either on a tripod or it's been in a fixed position. Um, so that in itself is really, really difficult and to get that angle that he's got there without any uh, landscape, ground shots in it is, 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 is quite good. And obviously the lady on the top is caught her, the, with her hand up and, and she's obviously smiling and happy so yeah, that's quite, it's quite a difficult shot but yeah, that's um, in a nutshell, it's, it's, it's down to um, a good eye and, and good camera still should be especially. What are the, the most, most important, important elements, elements of this of image? This action are, uh, as I mentioned before, was catching the rotor turning rather than being still. You see many shots of planes where you would actually catch the prop still, and it doesn't look like it's flying. It looks like it's static. Yeah. Um, in this instance, because there is no ground, it gives the illusion of you're actually with the plane as well. 
which is important, that you're actually in front of the plane and you're actually kind of flying with the plane, yeah? Okay. Um, and obviously the smoke coming out gives it that uh, momentum as well. Again, uh, pretty much the same, you're conscious of shutter speed and there's one thing that I notice about this and, and, it, and it's probably maybe due to editing, but, um, and I didn't mention it with the last photo because it wasn't as obvious. Um, if, if and, and it, it, obviously it's two different photographs, so there's two different elements going on here. <clears throat> this shot is easy because um, the photographer doesn't have to think about um, the rotor of the plane, yeah, which in the previous photograph he did have to take that into consideration. All this photographer has to do here is make sure that he's got his focusing right, the focus points are right, and that he's focusing on the subject rather than uh, somewhere beyond or in, in front of the subject so that it keeps the subject sharp. Um, now, to do that as well, and to have a fast shutter speed, um, he's going to have to have his aperture wide open. And I can tell he's got the aperture wide open unless it's post-processing is because you've got this vignette, in, what's called a vignetting on the edge here, and it comes all the way around. He could have put that on later on to focus in on the image, but my guess is that he was, he was shooting with a wide aperture, so he could use his, the faster shutter speed as possible, yeah? Because he's obviously going to be moving very, very quick. It's a difficult shot is in the fact that he's probably, I don't know how many times they, they, they've taken this shot, they might have done it two or three times, might have done it just the once, but uh, he's obviously going at speed and to get the focus on him, and especially the framing, the framing, don't forget he's, uh, when we look at rules of thirds, He's in kind of the, the left-hand third of the shot, and which is important because he needs space to move into. So he's coming off, obviously, this, this face here, and he's moving into the frame. So that allows that breathing of his, him and his bike to carry on. You can imagine that carry on. You, you can't see where he's going to land, but he's going to land somewhere down here. That's important, his landing space and beyond. Okay, the, so what are the, the most, most important, important elements, elements of, of this, uh, this action photograph? Are obviously, the, the, the biker, you call them bikers, uh, and the landscape. The landscape and the biker are as important as, as one another. There's a relationship between the two here. And it's, the relationship is where he's come from and where he's going to. And that halfway point. He's, it's important that he's sharp and in focus, as well as getting that um, foreground in focus as well. Not particularly the background, because the background's irrelevant, but, um, and it doesn't really need to be in focus, but certainly the point of where he leaves the rock and the point of where he, he lands is certainly uh, an important factor. In this, and there's no saying it could be cropped differently, but again, it, it, it's using a good uh, proportion of the frame. Okay, so comparing the, the two, two photographs, photographs which them, would you consider to the be the winning photograph of the two? I would say the two. Uh, technically the, the most difficult shot would, would be this one of the aeroplane. You're using an extra skill in the, in, in the camera and trying to think about exposure more than you think of this one. This one could, no, could not be repeated easily because if the, the, the photographer's on the ground, he might only have one um, <clears throat> opportunity for this, this shot. This, however, in this shot with the, with the cyclist, he may have several opportunities. He could jump off, he could go back up the hill and do it again. This one's a one-off. This one isn't, so I think technically this is better, okay, in my opinion.
let's have a look at a famous landscape photograph. This is Grand Teton, Ansel Adams. Ansel Adams is known to be the best landscape photographer of all time. Ansel Adams, famous landscape photographer, born 1902. Adams popularised landscape photography. He used large format cameras because of their ability to ensure extreme high resolution and sharpness when rendering images. Sean explains what elements okay, a judge considers so, um, when judging a landscape, landscape photograph. Wow, she's beautiful. Um, as everybody's aware, a, a land, landscape is, is a vast, vast genre and, it, and, and there's a lot of, there's many, many, many elements to it. In this particular shot, um, What's important is what the photographer wanted us to, how the photographer wanted us to feel, and how he wanted us to be, to interact with um, what he saw. And 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 I think um, in this case, the photographer wanted to us to feel like we were there with him. Yeah. Sean uh, explains the most this, important and, and element of this landscape photograph. Uh, there's probably there's, there's more than a couple of elements. Um, one of them is, is, is using what, what they call um, a, van a vanishing point. And he's set that up with, um, he's, again, he's using the rule of thirds in this case, but it's not always in every case, where the footpath here leads you into the... In, into the into the landscape, into the image, and what that helps, uh, what that helps the photographer to achieve is that the viewer is actually can walk in and look around the landscape rather than it just being a static object. So what you're doing is you're following it like you would be walking through the landscape, and you'd be going up this path, and then you'd see these this mountain range in, at, at the back. But. What, what's important as well is, in, in, in this particular one, is that all the landscape is in focus. Yeah, so you've got your foreground in focus, you've got, you've got the stones here, really, really sharp, and you've got the mountain range at the back. So you can actually, there's no barriers within this image. You, you're going straight through, and, and, and you've got this beautiful um, uh, mountain range at the back. Um, although it looks very cold, it still, you know, it, it, it looks like you want to explore. It's like, you know, um, it, it reminds me of uh, Snowdonia in, in Wales in winter where I go walking sometimes. It, it, it's just, a, you just want to go and, and walk and just explore everywhere. And, and that's how it feels for me. And it, and it really, it, it's, um, it's nice. And it, it's a typical pictorial photograph as well. It's, it, 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 it appeals to the masses. It appeals to everybody. It's almost a, a, a piece of art for a wall, isn't it? Yeah. Or it could be a painting. But yeah, this this is quite an interesting one. This now, um, the technique that's used on this one is, is obviously what you call a double exposure, uh, and they, they might have used that for a, for many reasons. It's also got a, a texture over it to make it look like it's degraded. Uh, it's very creative. It's it's very interesting, but it's almost um, dreamlike um, and it's not in your typical um, landscape um, um, ratio it's actually in a portrait but yeah it's a landscape image um, it, it's very it's very tight it's, although it's although it's a building it's obviously a castle it's a very 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 tight and focused image of a landscape and it kind of makes you wonder what's here and what's there and it's not giving much away but it, it that is obviously what the photographer wanted us to do and then maybe it's got an eerie feeling or you know it's got it's got an emotional aspect to it because uh, it has got that almost ghostly look um, yeah I, yeah it's quite an interesting image Sean explains the most important element of this landscape photograph. 
again, there's a few things going on here. The important elements of this are, is that it's been, it's either been constructed, so it's, um, I would say, uh, it, it was a narrative, so that it's, it may be telling a story. This one's not telling us, the, the mountain range image is not telling a story, this is telling a story. Uh, and it's either the thoughts of the photographer or it's what he, he was leaving it open for us to um, make our own assumptions. Um, so you've got you've got the narrative, you've got the uh, you've got the technical aspects of the double exposure that he's taken. It looks like a picture of the, the same scene twice, uh, layered, um, and he's got the de the the kind of. Uh, the vignette and the degree it's got like a degrading element to it like it's been like you would expect from an old photograph that has been left in a shoebox in an attic it's been damp yeah so there's all that that's there's been quite a lot of consideration to how it's looked uh, and it that that kind of um degrading kind of matches um the the subject because it's an old building, yeah, and it's and it's obviously black and white as well, yeah. Comparing the two photographs, the, win the winning which photograph for me, the winning photograph of um, the two. Although this one's close to my heart, um, I, I I think um, this one. Has, uh, has got more of a story to it than this one. Sean explains what skills a photographer I think should have. The, the, the biggest skill is, is, is having a creative eye and being able to um, produce something that, that maybe not always exists and, and something that's in the photographer's head that because um, and the, the reason why I say that is you, you're not um, just taking images of what's around you you're taking images of uh, your experiences so I think you, having a creative eye and um, creating a scene that not everybody can see is, is important I would say that was the most important aspect, to be creative. Any image that has an emotional Sean attachment, explains what makes an award-winning photograph. A good start is, um, would be landscapes, um, portraits. Uh, and I say that because landscapes will always sell to people that access the landscape or go into the landscape, or go to a certain location, and maybe not be able to get there again, or maybe they love the place that much that they want a picture of it. And every time they go into a particular room, the dining room, they sit there and they've got that picture of Snowdonia, whatever, on the wall, they'll go, ah, I'm back. Mm -hmm. So if you can get that image, and you can do your research on what people love and what they like. It's the same with portraits, loved ones, uh, children, family. They'll always sell. People always want images of the family. Sean explains what the difference is between using a mobile phone camera and a DSLR camera. That's an interesting question. Um, modern day um, phones are, are very, very, um, take really good images, of, for instance with the iPhone um, X. Um, the problem with phones is practically they're not uh, very good for use in studios, for instance. Um, but on a, on a technical level, um, 
you have to be aware that these phones have a, a, a relatively small sensor in them. So what phone companies are trying to do is, is make the sensor in the phone do more work than what they can actually do. Now, um, what that means is there's a trade-off in something else. Yeah, so it may be low light or uh, you know not very good in low light. However, when you're using a, a, a DSLR, for example, it's a large sensor. It contains the same amount of pixels as what a small sensor is. Uh, there's megapixels, but the, the light gathering capability is a lot better. Uh, you, you couldn't shoot in a studio with a phone. Presently, you can't really shoot in a studio with a phone because you don't have that ability to connect to studio lighting, etc. They're great for landscapes and such, but at the moment, they, they, you, you couldn't compare them in that situation. However, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with taking a picture with, a, with, a, with an iPhone X, fantastic, and you can print the images off. But you can't have a great deal of control.